Hello everyone. Incensing combined with audio reactivity can create amazing visual effects which dance in real time to music, like you can see here. In this project you will learn how to use Incensing and work on chop data, which gives you way more control and performance compared to working on geometry in SOPS. If you choose other music and colors like me, you might have to tweak some values like the one for Bloom and some other audio reactive values. So for the first time, I recommend you to stick with my colors and this Dana Touch Designer song and play around when your network is done. We start with creating a constant value, which defines the resolution of the grid and some more operators later. Call it resolution and just set it to 80 for now. Add a grid swap, scale it to 1.4 and reference the resolution value for rows and columns. With a SOP to CHOP, we turn the grid into CHOP values, which we can work on more efficiently than in SOP world. Add a merge and a null and call it instancing. To see the changes during building the network, let's create a simple instancing and render setup first. Create the circus SOP, which will be our instance geo, set the radius to 0 0.005 and connect it to a geocomp. Also create a camera, a render with RGB key and a null behind it and a constant material and drag and drop it on, onto the geo. I set my render resolution to 1024 by 1024 and move my camera to 2 on the z-axis. Also animate the rotate z value of the camera to apps time dot seconds times 10 to add a smooth rotation for now. Let me just quickly change the viewer here to a separate window, so we don't have it in the background all the time. Alright, now turn on instancing in the geometry and use the instance null chop as default instance operator. Use tx, ty and tz for the translate values. Now you see the circles instance on each point of our grid. All right, the base grid is there. Now we start to play with the chop data for our instancing. In the following step, we use noise to make the instanced circles move up and down. So create a noise top, choose Perlin 3D as a type, set the period to 0.5, harmonic gain and offset to zero, and let's animate the translate z-axis for now with apps time.seconds times 0.5, but we'll make this audio reactive later. And also uh, reference the resolution value from the beginning for the X and Y parameters. Connect it to a top to chop and we need only the R value here. Activate output as single channel set to have all samples lined up properly in a single channel. On the crop page set crop to full image so we get values for the whole noise top instead of just a row. Connect the rename after that and type in TZ. Connect it to the merge and change duplicate names to keep last. That way the new TZ channel overrides the old one. Insert the limit shop behind the rename and just leave it for now. We will work on that later. Okay, the circles are moving. To add some rotation to them, we can work further with the same values. For that add a math from the limit and multiply it with 360. Connect the rename and call it rotation and also connect it to, to the merge. In the geocomp set rotation for the rotation xyz values. The circles now rotate while moving up and down, which gives it a more interesting effect. Right now we still see the full grid, but I want it to be round and I want the circles to get smaller on the side before fading out completely. To achieve that, create the ramp top, invert the black and white, set the type to circular, the face to 1, period to 0.5, extend left to hold and also reference the resolution from the beginning again. Connect it to a top to chop, again use only the R for red, activate output as single channel set and also set crop to full image and add a rename after that. Name it scale and plug it into the merge. On the instance page, 
set scale on all three scale channels. And you, you see the circles now fading out on the sides. All right, next we give it some nice colors and add some glow before we finally make it audio reactive. Again, we use a noise with Perlin 3D noise, period of 0.2, harmonic gain down to zero, exponent of 0.5, turn monochrome off and animate the translate Z with apps time dot seconds times 0.5 and again reference the resolution. Connect it to a null, name it color and use it on a second instancing page of the Geo under color OP and set R, G and B. The circles get the colors from the noise top now, but I want to change it to a specific look. For that, I really like to use a color lovers picker asset to choose from a nice color palette. Uh, and I recommend you to do it too. The link is in the description. For this project, I use the giant goldfish colors. Drag and drop it into the, the network, copy out the ramp inside of it. Set the ramp type to circular, animate the face for now just with apps time.seconds. Again, we'll change that later to audio reactive values. Set the period to 0.5 and extend left to mirror. Also reference the resolution again. Drop a twirl from the palette, set twirl to 10 and the size to 2. Insert a composite behind the noise and set the operation to U. And the fixed layer to 1. Connect the twirl to it and voila, we have a nice color scheme with a little bit of noise in it. Last step before audio reactivity is to add some bloom. For that, you can just drop the bloom from the palette behind the render, set the threshold for now to 0.03 and the bloom level to 0.75. Connect it to a comp, which is set to over, and also connect the render top. Finally, let's make it dance to the music. Drop an audio file in, an audio device out to hear it. I will just turn mine off for now. And then audio analysis from the palette, which you can find under tools. I just want the grid to react to the base of the music. So I connect the select shop and choose the load channel. Behind that, add a lag and a null. Set the value of 0.2 for the overshoot value in the lag to make it more smooth. From here, create four rename shops. Call them grid base, speed, amplitude, and bloom. Connect them all together in a merge with a null behind it and call it audio reactive. Let's begin with animating the base level of the grid. We can just insert a math and multiply it by 0.5. Reference the value now from our audio reactive null to the minimum parameter of the limit shop from the beginning. So we have to set the type to clamp first. You see the grid now bouncing back and forth to the music. All right, next we will animate the way the noise pattern affects the TZ position and our color ramp. Insert a speed chop and add a noise chop underneath. The noise type I use is alligator, a period of three, and I turn time slice on. Plug them both into a math chop, set combined chops to add, multiply it by 2.5 and use under pre-add apps time dot seconds times 0.15. Reference the speed value to the first noise top for the translate Z value and also in the ramp for the phase parameter. For some camera movement, reference it to the rotate parameter and multiply it with something like 15. This way the music will affect the speed of the movements in the grid and the camera. The noise will add some random movement and the app's time expression makes sure it never stays still. Movement and colors change now to the music. All right, now we will change the amplitude of the noise movements. With a standard touch designer song, we get values from approximately 0 to 0 0.34. 
for a good bounce in the amplitude, we want to change that with the math to 1 to 2. Reference the value to the amplitude parameter in the first noise. Lastly, the bloom effect should react to the music too. But let's use the original music value here and grab it from the select after the audio analyze. Insert the lag and the math. After experimenting a little bit, I found that values between 0.03 and 0.06 work fine with my setup. So I set the range from 0, 0 0.2 to 0 0.06 and 0 0.03. Reference the bloom value now to the threshold parameter of the bloom component. Okay, the project is done. But one more thing to say. Really try to understand the concept of instancing and you will be able to create amazing animations like this one on your own. It is just very important that you have the same sample length for your instance operators. Which means if you instance, like for example in this tutorial, 80 times 80 circles, so in total 6400 circles, you need data with exactly 6400 samples too. For each single point, you will need one value. If it's just one more or less, you will get an error. That's why we use the same resolution here for all the instance data. Alright, I hope you liked it and yeah, see you in the next tutorial. As always, peace out.